Welcome to Homegrown Table Talk. I'm your host, Anna Hamlin, and today we're talking all about the FFA organization. So we have four representatives here within the organization. Can you start with introducing yourselves? Hi, I'm Alyssa Feather, and I'm from Wilmot. I'm here representing my chapter and just advocating for them as well. Uh, hi, my name is Kayla McGregor. I'm serving as a South Dakota State Sentinel, and I'm from uh, Webster, South Dakota. And my name is LSD Fodder. I'm currently serving as a state FFA president, and I'm originally from Salem, South Dakota. My name is Casey Gehring. Um, I am from the Parkson FFA chapter, and yeah, I'm from Parkson. thing I wanted to talk about is what inspired you guys to get into FFA in the first place for some people it's a traditional thing that their family has been in it for generations and for others they might be the first one so and also you know what pursued you or what inspired you to pursue your position that you're holding within FFA now so what do you think Alyssa? What inspired me to get involved with my chapter was I just joined it to kind of learn a little bit about it but then I learned about all the opportunities it offers and I really loved that aspect of it so just getting more involved with my chapter as an officer and then being able to help others grow through FFA my parents were very heavily involved in FFA and because of that you know seeing all their awards on the walls really inspired me to want to be to be in that organization and through the competing in the CDEs and L the LDEs mm -hmm. inspired me to want to become a better leader and to improve myself so that I could improve the communities and the areas around me. And I would say, I mean, I grew up on a farm and got to have the agriculture background, so of yeah. course that pushed me towards FFA. Um, and then also I was just so grateful to be part of the organization that I decided to run for a state office because I thought, you know, what better way to give back and keep it going for another year. Mm -hmm. For sure. My chapter actually is fairly recent. We started oh, in cool. 2015, so it hasn't been a long around very long. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up with an agriculture background, so it was just something that I knew. Yeah. I was very passionate about, and all the opportunities that FFA has given me um, has really just strived me to push myself through it. And a lot of you guys talked about the opportunities that you've kind of had, you know, that grow from within just participation, and then obviously there's kind of new ones that evolve every year. So can you actually talk about some of those opportunities that you guys have had as a new organization, and finding all that stuff out? Yeah, so um, when we started, we didn't, we had about 20 members um, and they're all alumni and they come back and support us um, every movement we make but just like all the opportunities we get to compete at so many different events um, I personally compete in like three LDEs which are like leadership development events and then I've competed in um, like horse judging vet science and we get to go places we get to make connections and that's so huge as a small town just trying to expand your knowledge and For meet sure. people and you talked about CDEs, right? Can you yeah. explain those a little bit? Yeah, so CDE stands for Career Development Events. And basically what those are is they, they, they teach our members and our students about the, the broad um, types of agriculture that we have you know, within our state and across our nation. You know, so they're, they're very critical to our organization because they teach so much about um, the industries and some of the things that many agriculturalists do on a day-to-day -day basis. So as a state officer then, what are kind of your goals with introducing some of the other participants in FFA to the career opportunities that they might have? Yeah, so one of the ways we've gotten to do that is through our workshops mm -hmm. and um, building those and taking those to our chapter visits. So we've gotten to see, I mean, almost all 109 chapters we have across the state. So we're really excited to do that. Um, and every time we got in the classroom, we have different activities we get to do. Um, one of them that we loved was matching up like a commonly known industry or like professional, their title, with a career development event that you might not okay. think would have pieces of that. So um, we just looked at like vet science and how that could lead you to be a researcher or, you know, just lots of different things like that. Um, my personal favorite was ag communications because, you know, that led me to my major here at SDSU. Right. So just really tying in all those different pieces and chapter visits really helped with that. What are your kind of thoughts with having your chapter and working kind of within uh, that organization among other high schoolers and things like that as far as how you're feeling led into college in your career? I think with like leadership development skills, it definitely helps you become a leader and it helps you learn a lot about yourself. I did employment skills and that just kind of taught me a lot about myself. So going into college, it's very nice to be able to know a lot about yourself and kind of your interests and things like that. 
What do you think that you guys have learned outside of the career portion of, of things then, just like you said about yourself? Is there anything interesting that you guys have learned, maybe not necessarily related to ag and your career in ag, but just about who you are as a person? Probably one of the biggest aspects that um, we as state officers put on and the members get to experience is like our leadership uh, retreats where you're going to get to spend four or five days with uh, um, leadership oriented uh, members and students who want to learn more about leadership and you learn so much just about how, you're, how you, you yourself works in your leadership styles as well as how to work better with other students. You know, really that just contributes to the, the, some of the successes that has made FFA stay, stay around for the last 95 years. And to kind of build off of that, I think I've learned more specifically that like leadership is influence. I mean, that was something that we kind of heard but didn't realize what it meant until right. you know you have the opportunity, you work with those people, and you realize how much good can be done by one person and their influence and what they can do as a leader. So you guys had like the leadership perspective at the retreat. What did it feel like from the member side of things this year? For me personally, um, it's the opportunity to like to interview with people that you don't know. And um, like recently, we've been told to dig deep and find um, different parts of yourself that you can tell our nominating team um, just about you. And that's been really helpful for me is just to like really dig deep and find who I am as a person and how I can contribute to everybody else. Do you think then that everybody has a different thing that they specifically as a person can contribute to FFA, whether it is more of an agriculture background or just as a person, what you have to offer? Yeah, most definitely. I think that everybody with their unique personalities and everything has a lot to offer and it brings, it puts a team together that's going to work very well together. Of course. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we have almost 5,500 members here in South Dakota, and all of those students, I mean, I can speak for, they just bring so many different things. I mean, what we've seen all year is just from any background, whether you live in town or on the farm, you know, you like agri-science or you like, you know, anything else in FFA, it's all so important and it all has a part to play. Welcome back. I want to also talk about networking and the development skills that you guys have gained from FFA. So you two are still in high school. How has FFA played into maybe making some friends within school and that kind of thing and also helping you decide what you want to do with your futures? Yes, yeah, so I think, um, like you said, making friends, you find a lot of people that have the same interests as you, whether that be leadership, whether that be something in agriculture. And to grow off of that, you, you make lifelong friends throughout the FFA not just in your chapter, chapter, but yeah. throughout. For sure, I mean, I have friends statewide, and it's so nice because that you, they're one phone call away, and you can always count on them. And FFA has just given me that opportunity to connect with people and um, make those connections with like sponsors or people that I know will help me in my career later on. Um, FFA kind of played. A, didn't really play a part where I chose to go to school. Um, it was more of an opportunity thing, but FFA gave me those opportunities and now I know what I want to do with those opportunities and to make myself better. So you guys, have, have you picked out where you're going to school yet for college? Not yet? Yeah? So what are your, what are your career paths then that you guys chose out of that? So I will be attending SCSU for animal science. Um, my main goal is to focus on like beef. Okay. Um, I, I have so many dreams, like I want to work on a feedlot, I want my own cattle, I want, I want to work on a sale barn, I don't really know, <laughs> but like I want to focus on beef and the amount of connections I've made will definitely help me drive through that. Especially with friends that are already in the beef industry exactly. or have friends that are, that kind of thing. What about you, Alyssa? I'm coming to SDSU to study political science and I think just over the time meeting many people I've learned to become a great leader and just being able to use that in my um, education is going to help a lot. And that's something that's not necessarily directly connected to agriculture, but a really important aspect of it, right? Yes, yeah. Leadership plays a big part in it, and it made me who I am and helping me get through that, and it kind of just helped pick a path that I thought was going to suit me best. You guys have already started college, so how did FFA play into where you decided to go to college and also what you decided to do there? Yeah, so, you know, being so heavily involved in agriculture at home, you know, being from a ranch in western South Dakota, you know, um, 
I just, there was nothing. There was no doubt in my mind that I didn't want to come back to agriculture at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, um, where the agricultural industry right now, it's really hard to get started up and to start on your own. So that's why I, I'm pursuing a career in um, um, ag engineering. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to go kind of go down that avenue and uh, having some sort of job that allows me some flexibility to start my own ranch out back at home, around home, and you know, with the networking aspect. Um, just meeting so many different people you know they say that you can get to you can find somebody you know you can find the person find the same person you know through seven different people or seven different connections <laughs> which is crazy in like agriculture especially in the state of South Dakota it's like two or three you know just awesome and FFA you know um, one of my favorite things when I was a member coming to campus here for a convention was the pamphlets and getting everybody's signature. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I still have my the ones that I had when I was an eighth grader and freshman and some of those members that I met were some, some of my best friends till to this day. Have you found any again in college where like you weren't necessarily friends when you were in FFA in high school but then you met them again in college and you were like wait I think I remember you. <laughs> yeah yeah there was a, a few that like I competed against in yeah. like agronomy and then like now that we're here and we're not no longer competitions yeah. like oh man we can be Good buddies, you can study so. together. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? How did FFA influence your school choice and career path? Yeah, it was it was pretty simple for me. After I did the ag broadcasting event for leadership development event, it was an LDE. I just I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. And SDSU has one of the best ag communications programs in the country. Mm -hmm. And so it just made sense when I ran for state office and was able to get that that I could stay at SCSU, also do that ag communications program, um, and then be able to just still pursue FFA and academics at the same time. Yeah, I also want to talk about the future of FFA with all of you guys as well, because I think that ag is obviously a huge industry in our state and in our region too, and there's still kids you know, flowing into it. So as far as the future goes with FFA and its membership in high school and in early college years, what are your kind of hopes to inspire with younger members and just hopes for it in general in the future? I think mm, from the South Dakota FFA aspect, one of our biggest pushes that uh, we're making as an association is to get it more available in uh, more rural communities. Yeah. Uh, this past year we started um, a FFA chapter in Sioux Falls uh, CTE program mm -hmm. and we that's opened up a whole new door, you know, to new having new members, to being having their access to agriculture, learning about the importance of it, mm -hmm. as well as seeing maybe if they have a career opportunity within it, yeah. you know. so. Um, that's pretty much one of the biggest things about FFA, you know, is learning about all the different opportunities. And yeah, we do have seven new chapters this year, so that's been really oh, wow, exciting to see that, yeah, to see that growth uh, and bring up those numbers all the time. And I think just encouraging, you know, ag teachers, of course, and always making sure that they have all the resources and communication that they need, because um, they play such a big role in, yeah. in starting these programs and keeping them strong. And they really do have those connections with the students and make FFA what it is for those members. So really helping them and making sure they have what they need and encouraging new ag teachers. We have so many good ag ed students that are here yeah. um, and helping them find their career is really important. And then as a newer, somewhat newer chapter, have you seen membership growth and the growth of FFA in your community too, do you think? Absolutely. Um, so a little fact about my town, um, we actually had FFA like way back yeah. and then it kind of disappeared and now it's back, which is really nice because some of our grandparents were in FFA and now <laughs> we get to do it, yeah. um, but like we kind of skipped a generation. But it's really nice because like we kind of started small and we're not a big graduating class and we don't we're not a big school. Right. But we have 60 around 60 members in our chapter and within the last 3 years I think we've tripled. Oh wow. So it's absolutely awesome just like we're always growing and our youngest our little baby FFAers are probably going to be our strongest group and they're the biggest group and they are going to take our chapter to a whole new level. So as you guys are kind of aging up, I guess, in the FFA organization, what are you noticing with some of the younger members coming in? Do they seem driven to continue the passions that you guys have too? I think they are, yeah. Being involved is something within a small community and they want to keep that involvement going so that we have a strong FFA and just an organization in general. They have that passion to keep it moving forward. For sure, are you guys noticing the same thing? 
Oh yeah, all the time. I mean, one of my teammates and I actually got to go to Parkston for their FFA chapter visit, uh -huh. and it was amazing. I mean, they've got energetic members <laughs> who are excited to be in FFA, and we love seeing that yeah. because there's so many opportunities if kids are willing to put in the work and you know take them. <laughs> for sure. Oh, absolutely. And I think one of the big, one of the like most exciting thing is is uh, these kids are ready to work and put in a lot of hard work, not only into FFA to be successful, but into the outside side of their careers and life and you know just that hard work aspect mm -hmm. so. yeah they definitely there's a huge kind of hard work aspect of agriculture in general and in being involved with something like FFA it takes a lot of time and I think uh, you guys would all say that it's worth it and that it really has its benefits in the end but that was a perfect segue because up next we're going to be talking about the hard work that goes into agriculture and why it's important to be instilling it into some young members Obviously, agriculture in general and FFA involves a lot of hard work and dedication, so is that something that you guys continue to maybe deal with, but also want to inspire that value in other people too? Yeah, I would say in a lot of the communities where they have FFA, mm -hmm. there's also the same students who are on the football team, on the basketball team, yeah. also in student council, FCCLA, I mean, you name it, they're in it. And so I think also being part of FFA, they learn how to work really hard for everything that they have and everything they can do in high school. Um, and that was a really similar experience for my own chapter back home. For sure. Yeah. You know, um, Hard work is um, very important to agriculture, as we had mentioned earlier, and it just, it really, you know, in order to be successful in this organization and to really, uh, to utilize all of the tools that you're given, you know, it requires a level of hard work and it really um, FFA helps fine tune your hard working abilities. Yeah, do you guys have the same experiences in that high school perspective and even role on your own family operations that you have? <laughs> yeah, so like as Ella was saying, you know, makes you, if you're involved, it keeps you driven and it keeps you focused on many different things, but you're still prioritizing and you're able to multitask very well. And you work on your family farm too, I'm sure, right? I do, and multitasking <laughs> is, Huge <laughs> between being in school, being gone for FFA or just agriculture in general, and then going home to do chores and to just still try to run an organization at home and just like keep pushing. But multitasking has also like helped me um, learn about myself and what like can I put to the table and how can I accomplish all of my goals in one day. So it's been a challenge, but I wouldn't change it for the world. And I think one of the kind of values that we generally associate with agriculture is hard work. You know, you're up at dawn doing stuff till dusk or sometimes way after <laughs> when we have those rough days. Um, but it's sometimes forgotten how rewarding and how much fun it actually can be too, right? So FFA also kind of emphasizes having fun and energy and just enjoying the company of, of people like you, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Probably one of my favorite memories mm -hmm. or one of my favorite contests yeah. was the range CDE where you know you go and you judge ranges or plants within the natural range that we have you know South Dakota has a lot of natural prairie and yeah. it's important to protect it and so that's why that range contest exists but it took a lot of hard work to get there and um, with that hard work my team was able to make it to the national range competition down in Oklahoma City and uh, probably one of my favorite memories was driving on that 14 hour drive <laughs> down there yep. listening uh, my team had this one song that we love to play. We played it probably 150 times up there <laughs> and back. And yeah. it was Roxanne by the police. And my <laughs> egg teacher was getting very annoyed, probably about the third or fourth time listening to it. And then they got 100, 200 more times. Yep. <laughs> and he actually really used to enjoy the song. But now it's, I don't think he much cares for it much. <laughs> but. Do you have any fun memories like that? Oh, absolutely. I think one of the freshest ones in my mind was our actual officers, officer team went yeah. to National FFA this year. Mm -hmm. And our advisor <laughs> decided to take us to an Indian restaurant to uh -huh. broaden our horizons. Okay. Um, and while we were there, we didn't realize there was actually a traditional Indian wedding happening at the restaurant. Oh. And so we were the only other people there enjoying <laughs> our meal. And then there was a very large Indian wedding on the other side of the screens. And yeah. so we got to just experience a whole new culture at the same time and it was just very entertaining. Yeah, you learn a lot outside yeah. of even just regular agriculture content, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? You've been in FFA for a long time. Any favorite memories either with agriculture in general or just with the organization? 
So one of my favorite things is like we get to show livestock through FFA2 um, at State Fair. That what, it's a stressful time period at State Fair for me because like showing 4-H and FFA and we just run. Yeah. <laughs> but just like the opportunity to get out there and get under another judge's opinion, um, that's always fun because I I love it. Um, I love getting an opinion on my home raised animals. Um, I raise boar goats. Okay. So it's really fun for me to just like have that opportunity and the people you meet. We have so much fun, whether it's in the show ring or like out behind the scenes. It's every memory has been worth every dime. Do each of your goats have a different personality? Yes. <laughs> oh yes, and I could tell you all of them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they're all like total. They're like humans in their oh, own. Oh yes, and some of them are really sassy too, right? Any of those ones this year? I do. Um, so it's actually really funny. I have a goat. She's four years old now. Her name is Belvedere, or Queen Bee, however we want to call her, <laughs> and she knows it. Yep. She she ended up tearing her shoulder um, after kidding season, and we've been doing acupuncture on her. Yeah. But like, she will rip around and like cruise <laughs> on two legs. The zoomies. She's on her knees, and I mean, she'll push you. She she is Queen Bee. <laughs> Puts everyone in her place. Yes. What about you? Anything special? One of my favorite memories is when I was a freshman riding a charter bus with many different members from chapters down to National Convention. I was pretty fresh into FFA, so meeting all those people, and I still am very connected with them today, but I just love meeting new people, and so that was really fun, and we made a lot of memories. And I know that there might be some members that are from some more city areas. There's definitely urban populations that still want to get involved with agriculture. So do you guys kind of want to encourage more, more people to join, no matter their background as well? Yeah, I would completely agree. I think that like the career and technical education side of things that agriculture brings is really important no matter where you live. I mean, there's always going to be people to feed, you know, the world needs food. And so no matter the background, there's a place for everyone in FFA and meeting their interest and their niche needs. So I think that's something really cool that our organization provides. For sure. Yeah, you know, 90% um, 90, 90 of Americans don't know where their food comes from mm -hmm. and FFA helps shine a light and make that, that, make that high percentage come down and not only that but it's important to know the economic revenue that agriculture makes an impact within our state you know mm -hmm. beef is important uh, the honey production from bees you know yeah. I think we're top three or top one in the in the nation that produce honey you know and m many people don't know that but right. in order to be a successful member of society it's important to have all that information to know where your food's coming from and learn know what the industries are within our state any thoughts from you guys on that one too I think with you know careers growing, you definitely want to have some way that kids can get a uh, peak in their interest. And I think FFA really does help them. You know, maybe they don't come from necessarily a traditional farm background, right. but this might be something that hey, they're passionate about, and this is something they can see themselves doing in the future. And FFA is extremely nice to us. Um, like we said, we have leadership events. So if you don't want to do any like thing hands on, you have that opportunity to give a speech or right. do egg broadcasting, which. That interests absolutely everybody, and I, I love where our direction is going of encouraging younger members.